Welcome back to Age of Agility. I'm Nick LaFleur, producer of the show. Have you ever had a package lost or delayed? Has it happened more frequently this past year? If you've said yes, then you're already familiar with our topic this week. With a significant increase in online shopping this past year, more customers are relying on home delivery for almost everything. As such, we're getting a better understanding about how logistics works, especially that final step known as last mile logistics. The last mile problem is, according to our guest, always been where competition sits between organizations like UPS, FedEx, and the post office. It's something that many operationally heavy organizations are also trying to solve, both because this part of the supply chain is highly visible to customers and seemingly the hardest to streamline. Kathy Robertson, an expert on last mile and small parcel delivery, joins the show this week. Kathy is a writer, researcher, and analyst on all things supply chain for the Journal of Commerce and Air Cargo World, among others. In this conversation, we talk about that last mile of supply chain, why it's the most difficult to wrangle, and how logistics-heavy organizations can use technology to create more visibility, increase their resiliency, and in doing so, improve customer expectations and experience. Take a listen and enjoy our conversation with Kathy Robertson. Welcome to the Age of Agility. This is a show where we talk to people who are facing unique challenges with an agility mindset. We'll learn from industry leaders, business and IT professionals, and even check in on our colleagues from time to time. Stay tuned as we explore the age of agility. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Age of Agility podcast. My name is Shannon Curran, and I'm your host. And we are here today with Kathy Robertson, who's going to talk to us all about all things logistics today. So Kathy, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So can you tell folks a little bit about yourself, uh, about sort of the work that you do and the passions that you have around logistics? Well, I have been in the logistics space for over 20 years now. Uh, prior, prior to uh, entering the logistics space, I was a librarian. And so I kind of fell into the logistics space by touring a warehouse thinking, oh my gosh, this looks just like a library. Everything has a specific place. It was great. Um, I spent the first 10, almost 11 years with UPS on their supply chain solutions side of the business and uh, where I did a lot of research analysis and such as that. And then after that, I, I, um, I worked with uh, several different consulting firms uh, within the logistics space before I started my own business, which is a market research firm. Uh, we're focused on um, competitive analysis, primary research, doing specific reports and so on. Um, and also, I also write um, articles on behalf of Air Cargo World, as well as with the Journal of Commerce, where I'm focused on small parcel, last mile e-commerce space. Can you tell our audience, um, how would you define logistics if someone asked you the space that you work in? <laughs> Gosh, I had to do that a lot uh, yeah. <laughs> back in the day. It's basically, it's the operations part. You know, it's kind of like a fancy term for operations. And it's managing all that stuff that we order online or what a store may be selling. So it's uh, the manufacturing, well, the sourcing of materials that goes into the manufacturing of the goods all the way to our front steps, the delivery, the warehousing, all of that. So I'm sure you there's a reason why logistics is now in the mainstream, right? Like everyone has been executing on logistics for decades, maybe centuries. Um, but now you're hearing lots about this, uh, especially from since the disruption in 2020. So yeah. can you talk to us a little bit about how the focus has changed over the last year on logistics? Okay, so let me start off by asking you a question. Wait, no one's done this before. <laughs> so. Did you lose a package last year? Oh, yes. Mo many. Yes. <laughs> Did you um, have any delays? As yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's why it became such mainstream. Last year in particular, everyone's in my friends and family network were like, oh, we now understand what you do. So I was like, yeah. So 
it really came to the forefront last year with all the disruptions that COVID and the pandemic happened. Um, and that was because here in the US, we have um, very few nationwide last mile delivery providers. We have UPS, we have FedEx, we have the post office, and then we have regional carriers that focus on specific states. And then we have local providers. So what happened was all of a sudden, we we're all sitting at home, working from home, and we started ordering more stuff online. And that really upset the capacity limits that UPS and FedEx in particular had. And um, as a result, we had a lot of delays because they could not handle all the volume. It had all switched over to residential. And then on top of that, the post office. We heard a lot about the post office last year and, they, and they're still having issues for a variety of reasons. But, you know, just that sudden onslaught of um, e-commerce orders upset the balance, uh, the basket more, more or less. Absolutely. And I think there's, yeah, we all became acutely aware of logistics in the last year. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Every, we all learned how to read those tracking uh, emails from, uh, or from UPS, FedEx or whomever. And we were like, okay, it's supposed to be delivered three to five days. Now it's the 10th day. Where's my package? So yeah, yeah. We all got a crash course in, in logistics. So on that same topic, what is something that is mis often misunderstood about the field that you work in or the logistics field in general? Um, well, a lot of it, I get a lot of phone calls and emails from folks going, where's my package? What can I do? Where's my package? Well, there's a lot more. There's a lot of reasons behind why your package is delayed why it's missing and so on. So it's trying to explain to folks what's going on. Sometimes, you know, the big snowstorm um, that impacted Texas and, and a good bit of the country, that caused a lot of delays. Also caused a lot of emails on my side, trying to explain to people, your package isn't lost. Don't worry, don't freak out. It's just delayed because of the network, um, you know, with it moving through Texas or Memphis or, or Louisville or what have you. So it's understanding why a package is delayed, why, you know, and, and, and the reasoning behind it. Um, I think it's a lot of time it's difficult for a lot of folks to understand. Just because folks have become more acutely aware of the importance of logistics doesn't mean they understand the intricacies or the compli like the complicated nature of what's, what all that goes into it. Exactly. I mean, it's not easy. Um, I mean, there's engineers that have laid out these networks for UPS, FedEx, and, and, and other uh, logistics providers. It's very detailed. I mean, in different modes of transportation is involved. So you've got trucks, you've got rail, uh, railroads, um, and, and air. Uh, that's all playing a part. So, you know, your UPS ground package may have moved by rail three-fourths of the way across the country and then finally delivered by what they call the package car, you know, the, the brown trucks mm -hmm. that you see in neighborhoods. Yeah, absolutely. So you referred to this term last mile logistics a little bit earlier. So can you describe to our folks what what is that, what is that practice of last mile logistics? Sure. So there's really, there's three parts of a supply chain. There's the first mile, the middle mile, and the last mile. The first mile is usually the international component, whether it's coming by air or ocean into the US. And then the middle mile is be, uh, your goods being taken to a warehouse or, or a fulfillment center. And then the final mile or last mile is from a warehouse or from a store to your front door or to a store for you to go pick up or to an alternative pickup location. It's that final part, which is, which is kind of misleading uh, because a supply chain is not linear, it's circular because you may get a package, uh, you may have ordered a t-shirt or something and you look at it and go, well, that's the wrong color. And when you return it, that starts back that mm -hmm. loop. 
So it's just a circular, but for most purposes, the last mile is our front steps. Got it. So it does seem like the focus on the last mile would be evident specifically of this year, right? Oh, um, definitely. And I guess always, but that is really the customer satisfaction part of the supply chain, correct? Exactly, exactly. So um, as customers, we'll get angry with the retailer, you know, if our package is lost, missing or what, delayed or what have you. And, you know, we're blaming it all on them. And a lot of times it could be out of their control. I mean, in fact, a lot of times it's out of their control, whether just an increased amount of volume or what have you uh, could create those delays. But it's managing that expectation is what sets apart retailers and other um, businesses. So if they manage that well, they'll be fine. But if they just sit there and go, mm -hmm, you know, really, you know, let your fingers do the walking, go somewhere else. And, and that's what a lot of folks end up doing. So if they have a bad experience. I think we talked about prior to this call, um, these small businesses or these little mom and pop shops that are selling on Etsy and some of the online marketplaces, they were getting dinged over the holiday season because a lot of them do depend on like the post office you know, for those deliveries. And the post office, God bless them, is struggling. You know, they have a, a lot of um, uh, folks that have been impacted by the, uh, by the virus, as well as their networks were just overflowing. They were overwhelmed. And as a result, you know, a lot of these customers were going back giving these small businesses, bad reviews on Etsy, Amazon, eBay. They were being blamed for these late deliveries or non-deliveries. And, and that was very unfortunate. Yeah. So to that point, what are the typical metrics that uh, like a heavy logistics organization is measuring, uh, maybe in comparison to a, a company that is a little less operationally complex? Okay. Well, first and foremost, on time. Yeah, <laughs> delivery. So if you pick, um, if you pay for same day delivery and your package didn't arrive same day, then that's a ding. That's not very good. The, the delivery time is first and foremost, very important uh, that a lot of these providers will measure up against. Um, also, a lot of times, you know, it could be delivered to my house. But <laughs> I think I told you I've, I have found packages in my shrubbery uh, <laughs> everywhere but my front steps. I found it under the car once. Uh, we so, ran over something last week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So it's, it's things like that, that whole experience. It gets measured. And I keep referring back to UPS because, like I said, I came from UPS. That's an organization very well known for they're industrial engineers. I mean, they will measure the time it takes a driver to get out of their package car, walk up to the front steps to deliver the package. They are measured by the time it takes to deliver that package, just like that. So it's very, very precise. And, you know, and again, it will depend on the shipper, um, the customer of UPS or FedEx, what their metrics are as well. And I think this, you did refer to this, this is kind of a similar question on the outcomes that are most important to them. So it does sound like on-time delivery efficiency is probably one of those, right? Which probably relates to cost savings. Exactly, exactly. Um, one of the uh, important things that happened last year was usually FedEx and UPS, their overall volumes are usually split evenly between B2B and B2C. However, it suddenly, uh, tilted over to B2C, which are residential deliveries. Those are very expensive for, uh, for UPS and FedEx to deliver because they have to make stops at individual houses to drop off a package or two packages. And they measure that, ex that cost in, in terms of time and you know the efficiency and how fast they can do it. Um, so is very important to them. And they have installed, uh, they've implemented a lot of technology 
to help measure as well as to reduce the time, you know, for them. So, you know, route optimization. What's the best route once they leave the, the uh, package facility to, um, to deliver all their packages on a given day? So things such as that. Yeah, and it does sound like from our experience, what we see with some of our clients or customers is that importance of real-time insights and visibility into that data, right? If you, you can't just export it at the end of the week, right? Like exactly. you need to know real-time. Real time is very, very important. And thankfully, you know, a lot of this technology is based off of cloud-based solutions. So that real time is achievable, I should say. And it not only is useful for the, um, for the UPSs and the FedExes, but it's also great for us, the consumer, you know, so that tracking, uh, tracking our package so we know where it's at. We have this innate need. Well, in my family, we have this need to know exactly where that package is. <laughs> no matter what time of day it is, that need has been helped with uh, implementation of a lot of uh, technology to the point where we could almost track it down to within an hour of when that package will be delivered to you. And that's important, particularly, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, I like to use as an example, uh, when a repairman comes, a repair person comes to your house and they'll sit there and tell you, They'll be there anywhere between two and six o'clock on a given day. Well, wouldn't it be nice to know a little closer to that time? <laughs> so, and that's where we're getting with this whole tracking of packages, where we'll, we'll, we're getting a closer, a tighter window of, for delivery time so that we we'll know when to expect it. <laughs> right. Between nine and five. <laughs> That's exactly. my least favorite. You're like, I'm not home that whole time. Well, I guess now we are home that whole time. So I can't complain. I'm here. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. So I know we were, so we've talked a lot about the disruption in 2020 and all of the sort of um, difficulties that brought to supply chains and specifically last mile logistics. Mm -hmm. But so from anywhere from natural disasters to, you know, global pandemics, right? Um, but before that, um, what were some of the greatest challenges that some really operationally complex organizations were facing? Uh, maybe those that had bad reputations for their last mile logistics. Uh, where, where, where were things breaking down typically? Um, it varied. Uh, and I think the last mile has always been a key focus for these providers. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's where really competition sits between UPS and FedEx and the post office. So it's improving those, the performance levels on, on the various lanes, you know, city pairings between tech, uh, Dallas to Chicago or, or what have you. So getting that last mile um, delivered in the most cost-effective, efficient way possible because the last mile is the most expensive when it comes to logistics costs. It can represent over 50% of the total logistics cost. And it's costly because there's a, a lot of people involved, okay? Labor costs, as well as your, um, your trucks involved, your transportation. And um, so it's wear and tear, you know, it, not good sustainability purposes, you know, carbon emissions. And, and like I said, it's just the expense trying to drive those costs down. Not only UPS and FedEx and the post office trying to get those costs down, but the shippers as well, because they're filling it on the cost uh, of what they're being charged, you know, whether it's uh, over uh, surcharges or, or what have you. So that's always been a focus um, for all around. And the technology to link that last mile to the middle mile for the inventory purposes to provide not only the real time visibility and that tracking, but also knowing where that inventory is either in the warehouse or what store and to replenish quickly, particularly since we're all at home ordering a lot of stuff. Right. And as you were saying before, this is not just B2C either, right? Like no. there is, you know, on the B2B side, we, there are the same challenges. The customer experience just looks a little different. Yeah. But, you know, what's interesting there is that more and more 
folks that are dealing more in that B2B space, they're wanting the same experience that they have within the B2C, you know, Amazon. Right. Oh my gosh, it's taken us this long to talk about Amazon. How about that? <laughs> How did we get this long talking about logistics and we haven't brought them up yet? <laughs> but, you know, we've all ordered. Well, most of us have ordered off of Amazon. It's a great experience. I mean, they've mm -hmm. done a great job. And we expect that same experience from a B2B perspective. So, you know, getting that right within that whole space has been, um, it's been kind of a challenge for, for businesses because, you know, focusing on that technology, making those necessary investments, it could cost, it can cost. I often, I feel like I bring this up in every conversation I have about logistics, but in some of research we did last year with, um, with Harvard Business Review Analytics Services, we found that we surveyed like 500 large enterprise cust uh, customers, not of ours, but just companies in the world. And uh, they were saying that, you know, customer satisfaction used to be their number one priority. Mm -hmm. And in 2020, they learned that business resilience and operational agility is what we call it is actually the most important thing. Because if you don't have that, right? Like we were just talking about, you're not focusing on connecting your middle mile to your last mile. You don't have visibility to your data. You can't serve your customer, right? Like you can have the most beautiful UX in the world, but if your customer isn't getting served and you know, on time and with the expectations that they've been, you know, Amazon has created a lot of spoiled people in the world that want their stuff now or yesterday before they even thought they wanted it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. and it's. It's, um, it's interesting that, it, that those are interesting results because, you know, the whole resiliency, agility, nimble, those are something, those were what we were advocating uh, for before the pandemic hit. Sadly enough, it, it, it took, you know, such a disaster to happen for, for folks to finally wake up and go, yeah, there is something to this because we found out also that those businesses, those retailers that made that investment in the tech that helped to improve their visibility, the agility between, you know, going back and forth between the middle mile and that last mile, they were the ones that were proven more successful this past year versus those that were having to make a mad dash to find the, re the right tech tool to, to do just, just the basics. So, I mean, we saw um, such companies as Target, uh, Walmart, Amazon, of course, and there were quite a few others that did a, a pretty darn good job last year, um, being able to utilize their brick and mortar as well as their online. Even when their stores were closed, they were still able to like fulfill from the store to the customer's home or curbside pickup. So. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems like the, the output can change based on your, like where the world is now or what you need, right? Like, like curbside pickup was just an output of a, like a last mile logistics process that was effective, right? Like they were able to be innovative um, because their technology was working for them and they actually had insight. Exactly. Exactly. It is, it was interesting because I mean, curbside was, was picking up before the pandemic hit. I mean, there were more and more retailers offering it, but it just escalate, escalated. Something that simple. And, and, and it's, you know, there's a lot involved in curbside pickup, but, you know, to um, a regular customer, you know, they're like, well, this is easy. You know, there's no, shouldn't be a problem for this. But there were major retailers that actually rolled it out for the first time. Bed Bath and Beyond had been testing it off and on, but they finally really rolled it out. I think last May, and I want to say Dick Sporting Goods did the same as well. Now I could be wrong there, and I apologize. But you know, and they, they along with others, just found success between that as well as buy online, pick up at store, or in store, or or ship from store, and such as that. So, you know. A little bit of creativity um, has certainly helped. So here's the big question we ask everyone on the podcast. Uh, so what does agility look like to you? 
So in your world, what um, does the word agility mean to you? You actually could really speak to operational agility. Not all the folks on the podcast speak specifically to that one, but I'd love to hear what you think that looks like. It's really to be able to flex, to be proactive instead of reactive. I mean, yeah. you know, again, this, this is something that I've written on, I can't even tell you for how long. I mean, it's, it seems like ever since I first started writing about 20 years ago in this space, you got to be proactive. Um, and, and we've seen, you know, things such as the pandemic, natural disasters and other things that shows the need for this, uh, to be able to, to spend on a dime, you know. Um, I think those with global supply chains, which is probably almost every company there is, um, something happens to a supplier in Southeast Asia, to be able to just flip over to another supplier with, with such ease that it doesn't even cause a blip no disruptions or anything. And so us as the customer don't even realize that. And it also doesn't come at extra cost either. Right. And this is this is the big question, Kathy, if you could change the way that every organization does their last mile logistics, what would you tell them? Like, what would you change? What would you say, this is the way to do it? These are the things you need to do. Oh dear. <laughs> Just a small question for you. <laughs> That's just a teeny thing. Well, gee, if I had that answer, then I, um, I would uh, be CEO of one of these companies. <laughs> <laughs> or be out of the job, I guess. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, customer expectations within that last mile. So technology is an enabler. You know, we talk about how great technology is, and it is. But at the end of the day, it's, it's the customer. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the relationship. It's people, not the technology. That's just your tool to get you there. Uh, so I would say to differentiate yourself, keep having an awesome customer service, customer experience that last mile. Don't, don't make me have to go to another, to a competitor. Definitely. Which is easy to do these days. And there's lots of competitors. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Well, great. Kathy, this has been awesome. So our last question of the podcast is always, how are you doing? How have you been um, over this last crazy time? Seemingly you, your friends now know what you do uh, <laughs> for a living, which is nice, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah, a lot of them do understand what I do. And um, and like, I, like I've said, a lot of them still keep sending me their emails, uh, their tracking information, trying like, where's my package? Can, can you call UPS or FedEx, you know, and find out where my package is? No. Um, and, and responding to this, you know, likewise on social media. And that, that's a huge, a huge thing right there. Because if you don't manage that very well, it gets out of hand. You just look at all the tweets about the post office. But no, it's, as far as me, how I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, so for our folks that are listening or watching, um, depending on where they are, um, where can they connect with you? Where can they find you on the internet? Oh my goodness. My website is logisticsti.com. However, I am all over Twitter and LinkedIn. So you can find me on LinkedIn very easily. And you can also follow me on Twitter uh, at cmroberson06. Well, Kathy, this has been wonderful. You schooled me on logistics, which I appreciate. Uh, I feel significantly smarter uh, after talking to you. And to all our folks out there, make sure, like, subscribe. Um, uh, and we're, you can find us anywhere you find your favorite podcasts. Um, you can even review us, which we would love. Um, and you can also find us on quickbase.com slash podcasts, as well as our YouTube channel. So we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks. Bye.